So about a hundred years ago, scientists were making a lot of discoveries that now allow us to connect turbidity currents on the ocean floor and turbidites, uh, the rocks um, that show a characteristic uh, uh, slowing flow through time. So about a hundred years ago, geologists were describing turbidite rocks and suggesting that there were actually very fast flows on the, the bottom of the ocean floor, even though dynamically it's very difficult to sort out how to do that. Oceanographers were um, uh, mapping the, the bathymetry of the seafloor and discovering that, that there were these giant canyons on the seafloor. And they were trying to understand whether what processes could actually form those canyons, suggested, well, maybe when sea level was low, rivers caused them, or there are all sorts of different processes. Um, and then at the same time, uh, engineers were starting to put telegraph cables um, uh, between the continents on the ocean floor. So, for example, there were a lot of telegraph cables that were going from Newfoundland and Canada um, across to Europe uh, to aid intercontinental um, communications. And so it's really, and then finally there were also uh, uh, people doing experiments with flumes and they discovered that when you mix sediment with water, if you get enough sediment in it, it's dense enough that it will flow along a slope under standing water that doesn't have as much sediment. And so all of these things eventually came together into the idea of uh, turbidites and turbidity currents, but not until the 1950s. So it's a really interesting story about how different pieces of evidence of science come together for um, a specific interpretation. And so I want to use an example of a, a flow in 1929, which was not understood at the time, um, to show how those pieces of evidence um, came together. So in November 1929, there was a magnitude 7.2 earthquake um, off the coast of Newfoundland. And um, immediately after the earthquake hit, about six telegraph cables broke. And the timing, the, the, the break of the cables is known instantly because the telegraphs stopped getting uh, transmitted. And then over the next 13 hours, plus a little bit more, more and more cables broke going south from uh, the epicenter of the earthquake. And it was, and each one of those cables that broke was also in deeper water. And interesting, none of the cables in the shallow water on the continental shelf itself broke. So there had to have been a process going on in the deep ocean um, along as you went away uh, from uh, the coast. And in 1952, um, Hazen and Ewing uh, recognized, two geologists recognized, that what was probably happening was that the, the earthquake had triggered a landslide that generated a turbidity current, and that current was flowing down the slope and breaking the cables one after the other. You know, people had proposed turbidity currents before, but um, there wasn't a real understanding about how they worked and how fast they actually went. So in the, by, by looking at the sequence of cable breaks, they were able to calculate that the, the flow speed uh, was initially 90 kilometers an hour, and then it was breaking cables until it was flowing uh, as it slowed down um, to uh, 20 kilometers an hour. So still very, very fast. And they could also track the slope of the area uh, where the cables broke and what they saw was that it was a very steep slope initially and then uh, the, the uh, turbidity current would have slowed down as the slope decreased which is very consistent uh, with the dynamics. Finally there's an, one more point of evidence that suggests that it really was a turbidity current is that the ships when they went out to repair the cables dredged up a lot of sediment and they were finding um, uh, pebbles and mud class and sharp sand, sharp sand meaning 
um, it's, it's hard on the equipment, so uh, coarse sand in their, when they were dredging things up. And so that suggested that the, there was a fast flow it was fast enough to transport those large grains, but it was also slowing down through time, so it was de actually depositing those grains. Because if a flow keeps going fast, it will keep transporting uh, the grains themselves. So this is a really nice example of how all different types of, of uh, science and observations can feed into discovering a new process. Um, and in this particular case, it fits really well with uh, uh, the turbidites that we can see um, uh, in the rock record. Thanks for watching.